two problem twelve thirty six. All right, so you know if you haven't checked out twelve thirty five, I recommend uh, watching the first like, couple minutes. That way you know where we're at here. Um, we're doing curvilinear motion for dynamics, and yeah, let's get started with this one. So right away when we you know when we begin to tackle this problem we are given that R varies again with theta okay because it makes sense you know as as this ball goes down this this uh, slot um, the theta you know theta is going to be increasing and R is going to be either increasing or decreasing okay so yeah let's do this so we have R equals e to the theta okay and then just like we did before we're gonna do a um, we're gonna apply a chain rule here when we take the time derivative right because we're gonna have dr d theta d theta dr dt sorry and then dr d theta right that's just gonna be e theta right because, you know, just, yeah, uh, to the derivative of the exponent is like, right, it's the exponent times the derivative of what's on top, right? I, you know, I don't want to go over that, but yeah. Um, and then d theta dt, um, and then d theta dt, from before, we know that theta dot is d theta dt, okay? So we have theta dot Okay, and we're lucky in this, just like in 1235, uh, we're lucky we're just given theta dot and theta double dot, right? It makes our problem easier. Uh, when we take another derivative, okay, um, this is where it gets a little uh, trickier, right? Because we're going to be doing this times this, right? Remember, u v or u prime times v plus u plus v times v prime right so the derivative of the first one is just like what we did already so e theta theta dot times the other function just theta dot okay plus leave the first function alone e theta and then the time derivative of the second one which is theta double dot, okay? So notice how we just, just split it up into sections, right? Don't try to just crush everything at once unless you're, you're comfortable with your uh, derivatives, then feel free. If you're not, just go step by step, isolate everything as much as possible, put as many parentheses as possible, like if you're like coding something like C++ or Python or whatever, right? Um, yeah, so then, and it, so we're pretty much home free here. We are, let's clear it up. So it's going to be theta dot squared e to the theta plus theta double dot e to the theta, right? Which is just theta dot squared plus theta double dot e to the theta. Okay? And then. Now we just gotta plug in numbers, right? Uh, they give us, again, pi over four radians. So at pi over four, at theta equals pi over four, we gotta calculate the radial and transfer component, transverse component of the peg's acceleration, okay? So the radial component, just like before, we're gonna have r double dot minus r theta dot squared. Okay, and then the transverse component will be our theta double dot plus two r theta ugh, r dot theta dot. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to keep everything. Uh, uh, it's hard to not make a mistake saying these things. There's so many dots and double dots. Okay, so what does R come out to? When you plug it in, 
let's see if I calculate it. So when you plug in pi over 4 up here, you should get 2.193. When you plug in your values here, which is, you know, e to the pi over 4, theta dot is 2, right? And then this last one is just going to be uh, 2 squared plus theta double dot is 4, and then e to the pi over 4, okay? And then that is equal to, um, let's see, do, 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 do. I'm trying to see if I wrote it down anywhere. Yes, so I have this as 17.546 feet per second squared. Is it feet or meters? Oh, it's in meters. Sorry, meters per second squared. So that's our double dots. And again, I've been using this calculator. Uh, super useful if you're just working on your computer. Again, my handy dandy graphing calculator died and I haven't replaced the batteries. Um, I don't want to take them out of my headlamp for, for my hiking stuff. And then our dot is, um, where are you? 4.387. So that's when you, you know, when you plug in everything. Oops. Uh, meters, meters per second. Okay, let's, let's put it down here. Our dot is 4.387. Okay, and then our 2.193. All right, so we have everything, okay? And it was pretty easy, just a few derivatives. The, the hardest part is probably just keeping this organized. Uh, plug everything in, uh, in here, so we get, you know, 17.546 minus 2.193. Um, theta dot. Yeah, so if you guys, there's a bit of noise in my apartment. We're moving from Pasadena to Glendale, so don't mind the noise. And then theta dot uh, is 2 squared. And then so here we have 2.193 times theta dot, which is 4, plus, remember, theta dot and theta Sorry, theta double dot and theta dot are both given to us by the problem statement. Um, 4.387 and then theta dot, which is 2. Oof, okay. And then finally, I'm going to write in red. So now you get, so right up to here, if you guys got it all right, you're, you're, you're good to go. On to the next problem. If you don't wait for the full answer, you stick around. Uh, so AR, this ends up being 8.774 meters per second squared. And then the transverse component ends up being 26.37 meters per second squared. All right, that's it. We got the radial and transverse components of the PAG's acceleration at that instance. All right. Thanks a lot for your time, guys. Um, again, I'm going to try to keep this all updated, uh, especially as we move to the end of the chapter. Um, and I hope this serves as a big uh, foundation for you guys. Thanks a lot, guys.